Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Let me begin this way before I share what I'm going to share. There are no accidents in the realm of the spirit. You understand? There are no coincidences in the realm of the spirit. If there are any accidents or coincidences in the, realms of the, in the realm of the spirit, that can only happen if for some reason either there is a glory of God ordained for that, which is in very rare cases, but many of the times because of lack of knowledge, because of our lack of knowledge, Certain things happen in the spirit realm. I was sharing with somebody recently and I told them, look, God has ordained rites of passage, right? And gets in the spirit. And these gets in the spirit realm are ordained for you to enter inner realms or another world through God, by grace, but as is designed through his word in the way man ought to enter these realms. You understand? There are things that some people might accept as status quo and believe and receive and think, okay, maybe God intended things to be this way. Yet in real sense, God has not ordained things to be that way and there is no manner in God that intends certain things to happen contrary to his word. And sometimes we question his mind on why certain things happen a certain way. And he gives us the affirmation, for I know the plans that I have for you. You might not know, you might question, you might be indifferent about them, you might even think what I'm not thinking, but I know the plans that I have for you. He says plans to make you prosper, thoughts of peace, plans to make you prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So when Satan is attacking, he's always on the gates, these gates spiritually. You understand? For example, one of the rites of passage, the first one is birth. The day you are born, the day you came in this world, something in the spirit realm happened. Do you understand what I'm saying? There were two opposing forces for your existence on earth. One was the force from God that had to make sure that you live up this far. God was making sure that you would have life, that you would live, that you could exist, that you would stand, that everything he has spoken upon your life would come to pass. There was one force there, fighting vehemently for your existence. You understand? But whether you know it or not, or have seen it physically or haven't, undeniably also, there was a power, there was a force, There was an intent by hell to make sure that you don't exist. Why? This is in the nature of Satan. He's always opposed to God. You understand? Some people, on their birth, that gets of birth, when they came in, they were born with diseases. Some incurable. Some curable. You're not responsible. You don't even know how that came. But it's so that you were actually born with a sudden infirmity. And then they tell you, oh, this person was born with sickle cells. And some, it kills them at the age of 20, some. You understand? You didn't wish it. It was not in your power and ability and, and intention to get this. But you phoned up one day, and then they say, oh, this kid was born with diabetes, or probably developed diabetes at a young age, or there was a problem with how their pancreas. The pancreas had a problem, and uh, at the age of... 13 or 12, this person is diabetic. 13. 
And then there are those who get diabetes probably at the age of 70 or 80. But then this one got it at the age of 13. Or some were born with all manner of diseases. And they did not have the opportunity to live their full life. That means that at that gate particularly, Satan impressed the seed in your spirit of destruction. You did not know or have an idea about it. You're not responsible for it, nor have a part in it. But again, it happened. You woke up one day and there was affliction on you. So I'm saying that some of the things that happen to us, we are not directly responsible for. But Satan starts from these gates. He starts from these uh, rites of passage. It starts at those places where God opens us into another world and then he wants to frustrate us such that when we are in that world we are not happy, we are not of joy, we are not victorious. You understand? And God knew and had a plan for it. For it. You understand? That is why I tell people you might not be responsible for what is happening in your life but you are surely responsible right now for what is going to happen in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Do you understand what I'm saying? You might not be responsible for what is happening in your life now, but you're responsible for the life to come. You can fix your future by the grace of God through his word as he has revealed us through knowledge. Somebody shout hallelujah. There is something we are imprinting in your spirit, and that thing will produce results very soon, very, very soon. Somebody shout hallelujah. So, many things happen, okay? Maybe some of you, uh, next rites of passage at 12 into 13, teenage age. You also have your challenges. Some of you, your lives were altered in your teenage years. Some of you, your lives were altered the day you got married. Some of you, that your days were altered the day you graduated. Some of you, your days were altered the day you had children. Some of you, your days were altered the day you met certain people. You met a person's life and either your life went the other way or this way. But you see, you have to be careful about your life because you have one life. And careful, I'm not saying draw all these lists of legal things you have to live by to keep yourself. Careful, I mean, take the word of God seriously, personal, for your life, your future, your destiny, and your posterity. Because you never know when you will need the word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Now, because of that, God has given us principles. He has given us patterns. He has given us ways to live this life of salvation with joy, with tranquility and victory. And it's possible to be happy. Tell your neighbor it's possible to be happy. It is possible to be happy. It's very possible to be happy. It's possible to be a victor. It's possible to have results. It is possible to, to get victory upon victory upon victory upon victory upon victory upon victory. Upon victory. That every time you're tested, you pass. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, now, I want to introduce you to a very interesting life of the spirit. That will help you live the spirit realm without, like I said, coincidences and accidents. That will make your life victorious in every aspect. Somebody shout hallelujah. And you must firstly believe that it is possible to have a victorious life through Christ. Somebody say amen. First Peter, chapter 1. If you're there, you say amen. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Now, let me begin from verse 1. He's Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. He says, we are elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit, and to obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. He says, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. He says, blessed be, now listen, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. He has begotten us through a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus through the dead. He has begotten us through a lively hope through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. He has begotten us through a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope through the resurrection which is in Jesus. He has begotten us again through a lively hope through the resurrection which is in Jesus. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection which is in Christ Jesus. He has begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection which is in Christ. Because Jesus is raised, 
He has begotten us unto a lively hope. Somebody shout hallelujah. He has begotten us unto a lively hope. Lively hope. Not dead hope. Lively hope. Why is our hope alive? Because Jesus was raised from the dead. Somebody shout hallelujah. And we believe it that Jesus was raised from the dead. And so the Bible says that you might believe on the Son. That through believing on Him, you might have power in His name. You must believe that Christ died and raised. This, this is not, listen, it's not possible that Christianity has existed up to now on a false hope. You can't tell me that the top selling book since the day it was printed is lying. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus died and was raised from the dead. Somebody shout hallelujah. That is why we have a lively hope. That is our, why our hope is lively. Because we know that the Son of God died and was raised from the dead. So he has begotten unto us unto a lively hope. When you become born again, your hope is alive. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say your hope is alive. What is hope? The expectation of good things. That's what hope is. The expectation of good things to happen and not bad. That's what they call hope. The expectation of good things to come. He says you, your expectation of good things to come comes alive because Jesus died and raised from the dead. Hallelujah. That's why I don't worry about my future. Every time I think to worry, I remember the man died and was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Somebody said hallelujah. Every time you think of, but God, how will I eat? Where will I sleep? I want you to remember the God that you serve died and was raised from glory. Hallelujah. If Jesus stayed in the grave, there would have not been a hope. That's why Paul later says that if Christ was not raised, then we are of all men most deceived. We have all men most deceived. If Jesus was not raised from the dead, then our gospel, Paul says, is useless and we are of all men most deceived. If Jesus was not raised from the dead. But I have good news. He was. Somebody said hallelujah. I say Jesus was raised from the dead. That is why we have a lively hope. That is why our hope is alive. Because he was raised from the dead. And I believe it. I believe it. We're going somewhere. Now, the Bible tells us in the next verse. To an inheritance, because we believe in that resurrection and our lively hope, we have an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are, the Bible says, kept by the power of God through faith and to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You are kept by the power of God through faith. Somebody said, hallelujah not drugs you're not kept by good doctors you're not kept by you're two times three a day <laughs> somebody shout hallelujah paracetamol eh? mabendago <laughs> you understand magnesium you're not kept by magnesium praise god no those drugs don't keep you you're kept by the power of god somebody shout hallelujah you're not kept by security. No. You are kept by the power of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, he continues to say, Wherein, now listen, now I'm starting on the point I need to make. He says, Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. He says, Wherein you rejoice, Comma, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. He's saying, because of this, you're always greatly rejoicing in God. Although now you might be passing through a particular situation, which is only temporary and only for a while, but that notwithstanding, your joy and glory and rejoicing in God is exceeding steadfast and standing firm with Him. You are greatly rejoicing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say I rejoice in God. Somebody say again and say I rejoice in the Lord God. Now, let's go a bit deeper. He said that the trial. Now remember when he says that though now for a season if need be our heaviness in heaviness through manifold temptations or trials or tests. He's saying that there's a full column there, meaning what is coming after. Again, we always insist. 
explains what has been said before. And he continues to say, Whom having not seen, you love. In whom, though you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. Wow. The Bible says, even though you have not seen him, you love him. In whom though you see him not, yet you believe in him and rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. You have not seen him, yet you love him. Even though you have not beheld him a certain way, you are believing in him, rejoicing with joy unspeakable, full of glory, receiving, the Bible says, the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Who has understood it? Let me explain what it means. You go through trials and tests. And the time comes and you don't see Jesus. Whether literal, figuratively, connotatively, denotatively. You understand what I'm saying? Who is following what I'm saying? You get to a situation. You have a rent issue. But you don't see God in it. You have a financial issue. And it seems like God is not there. You have believed him for a miracle. You have prayed and fasted, gone for overnight and given all that you can give. But you still don't see him. A certain way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, it's possible to cry out to God and he sounds like he's silent on you. Some of us have been through situations where you're seeking God and say, God, what is your will pertaining my career? God, I have three options. I have three things. I'm going through this and going through that. How long will this be? When will it stop? When and how will this thing go? How will it? I prayed. I believe you to take away this thing. It is disturbing me. I wake up every morning. So you, you seek God. I have confessed right. I have done all these things right. I have done, I have fasted. I have prayed. I have given God. I, the apostle told us confess right. I confess right. The apostle told us come for the overnight. We went for the overnight. They took us on the mountain. They put us through water. They went us through fire. I went street preaching. They told me that if I confess this, everything will happen. And I did confess and nothing happened. And he says, you see him not. Do you understand what I'm saying? You confess and confess and start reaching a place where people start looking at you and saying, but I think there's a short, there's something wrong with this sister. Why? Because honestly speaking, for how many years have you spoken this message? Ah, uh -huh. confession. And then as you're walking around Kampala Road, you find a very ragged old funny sister, that OG of yours, who never used to like to pray. And then she packs a car. <laughs> then you remember you have a mutualo in the bag and you're like, Jesus. Hallelujah. And then you say, but God, one day something will change. I don't know how, but one day something will change. You keep on believing. You keep on confessing, right? You even sow seed. When the preacher is preaching and then they preach a sermon, you come with your command and you throw it in a basket and say, you, you, that's mine. And then you wake up in the morning and nothing has yet. You don't see Jesus. Who am I talking to? You don't see him. But God, I've believed for three months. I've believed for one year. Huh? And then you also start comparing yourself with the guy who you know very well doesn't like praying. He even comes late for service. Sometimes he comes for Fanero. Sometimes he doesn't. For you, Bambi, you even wake up in the morning. You arrange chairs. You do street preaching. You do everything. And you say, but God, me, I do literally everything. But I'm not seeing answers. But look at that woman. For her, she comes in when she wants. Sometimes she prays. She doesn't even tithe. But she has or he has results. I don't see you. Oh, I'm in the wrong ministry. Maybe I'm under a wrong covering. I might be. Now my covering is under a certain special man of God. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, what have I done? Then you start searching yourself. Some of you even judge yourselves for things that you've not done. Oh, I think God, this is why. You understand what I'm saying? I would have been a success, but this person, these things are happening in my life. And then you continue like that until some, not all, but some of you get to a point and you're like, but Jesus, where are you? Where are you? Where are you in all this? 
I believed you. I'm a faith person. I'm a present truth minister. I'm a grace person. And my man just walked out of that house and he left. My husband left. Apostle, what have I done? I'm supposed to be stretching forth. And people are saying all things about me. How Simanya have done this? How Simanya this? Simanya how people are doing this? How Mama, you're not alone. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? You're not what? You're not alone! Do you understand what I'm saying? And those courses for some ministers, once these issues happen, two, three, four times, they give up. And then they say, you know what? I think I'll pray when I want. What's the cause of going to church? What's the reason of sitting in ministry? Why am I even striving to go and pray? What's the reason for me to reach out to the source? What's the point for me to go and serve? What's the point for me to go and pray? God may have given everything. Some people are even, they come in my office and somebody is annoyed with God. They are pissed. They are literally saying, Nemo. One time a woman came into my office and she said, Apostle, honestly, I have no words for God. Some people no longer have words for God. They no longer have words for God. As in, they told him everything he knows. You understand? If we are still talking about this God and you have not fixed it, quite honestly, there's a problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of you, the sermons that are spoken, they don't go to the heart. They go to the mind like a drug. They just consume you for the time when it's, you're high on it. And then when the drug leaves, you, you sober up and say, hey, because I have bills to pay. Yeah, but when, on Thursday when you're saying, Mustard, why Mustard? Wah! Somebody even pulls their tongue out. Ah! Then they put it back. Then they put it on their Facebook statuses, eh? WhatsApp statuses. You understand? A Mustard baby. Every, I'm a poet of the word. I'm a poet of the word. I'm a poet of the word. You are poeting everywhere. You are going in the office as poeting. You wake up in the morning. You get a report. And you're the same person sending me a message. Apostle, pray. Papa, pray. Pray now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for waking you up at 3 a.m. But pray. It's now or never. And I'm like, what, 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 what did you learn? Let me show you the war of a victor. He says, seeing him not, you have not seen him, but you love him. That's the first of it. That even though God, you have not yet come in my situation, I still love you. Don't walk out of God because of situations. Don't fall out of love because uh, the more you love him. This is talking mature things. He's talking to the mature. He's not about spiritual babies who whine over everything. Oh God, why me? Why her? Why how? Why me? They love me. But what is wrong? What is it that you have not seen? Okay, let me go to another man of God, prophet. Let them search you. Let them what? Search you. You realize that some, not all, but some have even failed to fix their own. Not all, but also you take their your problem. You understand? Let me go to a, a certain apostle. You go. Let me, there's a certain pastor. The moment you meet him, he will tell you everything they planted in your family. You go. You go and then they look for what you have. run, hide, play everything, shortcut, short wave, short everything. You're going to still come back to the word. They don't run away from scripture. <laughs> Why? Because he, that is the one thing he has told you, heaven and earth shall pass away. I, I think there's a special evangelist I need. Mm, that one, eh? Kari, go. You'll still get back to the word and say, Mokama. Some people, they take too long to understand. But you'll finally understand that the answer is there. You might take 20 years. We shall be patient with you, mama. But you're going to come back one day and realize that the answer is in the word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now God is saying, yes, you're going through all these predicaments and circumstances. Do you still love him? 
He says, though you now see him not now, presently, you might be in a situation where it's almost as though you're deserted, he has left you, things are not working the way they ought to, but the Bible says, yet you rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. And he has promised, once you tune your spirit that way, he tells you, you will receive the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Who has understood what I just said? Maybe let me give it to you in Romans 15, 13. He says, now the God, now when the prayer of says, now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. You don't believe crying. You don't believe lamenting. No. Faith is made complete. You receive the fullness, the end of your faith, which is the salvation of your souls, by understanding how faith works. He tells you when you say that I'm choosing to believe God, don't believe crying. Don't believe lamenting. Don't believe feeling sorry for yourself and getting into pity parties. You understand? Collecting all people who are supposed to be the world, seven people who are supposed to understand you, and they tell, don't worry, darling, this will pass. No! Oh, hallelujah. He says, now the God of peace will fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So this is the power of the Holy Ghost for you to rejoice and be happy and be filled all with joy unspeakable, full of glory, even when Christ is not appeared. Whom you believe and love having not seen and even though you see him not now yet he says you are rejoicing and joying in your spirit receiving the end of your faith which is the salvation of your soul the first time i heard news about me i went into my house i locked myself in my room and i said thank you who am i to be counted worthy to be a partaker of your sufferings. Who am I, God? Tears came to my heart. Not of what they were saying or doing to me. Honest tears of gratitude that the Son of God had counted me worthy to carry the honor of his name and the badge of persecution for the gospel. I was eternally grateful. I joyed in the Lord and I rejoiced all way. I was happy in my soul. Yes, the outward man looked sad, but the inward man was happy. And before I knew that, even the outward man came into the sink and enjoyed the, the rhythm of that spiritual song in my heart. The next thing I knew, I was so happy. I started rejoicing in the Lord. I have not maybe seen him the way I ought to see him. But I tell you between me and you, I am rejoicing in joy unspeakable, full of glory. And it's an honest conviction in my heart. I don't look back and I say, oh God, what? No, in the inside of me, I joy with the Lord. Imagine you went to somebody and then they gave you the worst news in the world. And then you say, oh, thank you, Jesus. What a fellowship. What a love and mercy. What a glory that is going to be revealed in this God. Oh, how you love me. That even in this situation, great things are happening. What a joy. What a joy. And before you know that, you start dancing alone in your house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And then you start joying. And then somebody says, how are you? You say, I am fine. And God tells you, if you do that, you receive the end of of your faith, which is the salvation of your soul. Let me tell you, even if you're in the worst situation in the, in the world, even if you are going through the worst situation in the world, learn to rejoice in the Lord. Learn to love him more. Hmm? I remember telling myself, I said, God, you are good. I started singing in my house. You have been so good to me. I started counting all my blessings. You have been so good to me. I know that situations are taking place, but you made me whole. You have been so good to me. 
and then you start to see that love of God pouring on you you start to feel him so there like he has never left you before and then he tells you look you began by rejoicing before you saw me now see me some of you the reason why you don't see God in your situation is because you want to first see him and then rejoice no get through the what situation and la- oh my god i feel the anointing somebody take it get through a situation even when things are not working the way they are supposed to and say but god i love you nothing has changed how much i feel about you nothing is going to make me preach less or love you less Nothing is going to take away the heart and zeal that I have for you. I signed up for this and I was happy that I did. I don't go back but I'm glad that I did. I know the plans that you have for me. I celebrate your love for me. I celebrate your, oh, and then you put on a praise song, hallelujah. You put on a worship song that reminds you of his goodness and love, hallelujah. You start singing of his endless love for you. You start rejoicing in his love. You start rejoicing in his power. You start rejoicing in his forgiveness. You start rejoicing in his mercy. You start rejoicing in his care. You start rejoicing full of glory. Hallelujah. You start to have a joy in your heart. Praise God. In the time when people think that you're supposed to be the saddest. Yes, outside you might look at me sad. But when you go in there, I am a very happy man. And God has promised. If you pattern yourself that way, you will receive the end of your faith which is the salvation of your soul he's saying i'll get you out of that situation i'll get you out of that poverty i'll get you out of that sickness i'll get you out of that circumstance yet you are suffering for a while yes temporarily you're going through these tests but he says but though even then you greatly rejoice in god he says rejoice rejoice again i say rejoice rejoice hallelujah you have to get to a point where you you rejoice in god He says, rejoice in the Lord and he shall what? Give you the desires of your heart. Rejoice in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Sometimes, even when I'm going through the hardest situations, I don't forget to tell him, oh God, you're good. God, you're awesome. He says, delight thyself in thy God. Delight, just delight. Get to a point where you're delighting yourself in him. It doesn't matter what is happening. Uh Uh-uh. Listen, we are happy. Tell your neighbor, we are happy. We are rejoicing. The joy of the Lord is in our spirit. He doesn't mean that the pain is not there. No, the human part of us hearts. The human part of us hearts. But don't be mistaken. We are spirits. Don't be mistaken. But inside there were very strong people. Hallelujah. Don't be mistaken. But heaven has not stopped and the word of God has not come in out of effect. No. We still believe the word of God and it still has results and the effects the Lord has spoken upon. We still believe that God is good. And I remember in the most beautiful way, in the most beautiful sense, I, I, this goes beyond human understanding. A scripture rose in me. I didn't think it. I didn't meditate it. It is not something that I was looking for because I was looking for comfort. You know, like those things where you say, let me look for a scripture to encourage me. I wasn't looking for a scripture to encourage me. But something bubbled out of my spirit during that period. And the words came out of my soul. I had them so clearly, like it wasn't me speaking, but the spirit of God speaking in me because of the word he had planted a couple of years ago in my spirit. And I had the word say, for the Lord is and his mercies endure forever. And I kept hearing it in my spirit, the Lord is good, and his mercies endure forever. The Lord is good. Yes, outwardly there was pain, but there was a rejoicing in the goodness of the Lord. There was a joy in my spirit that even though the sad, the face was sad and I was feeling pain outward, but inside there was a full assurance of joy and a genuine rejoicing in the name of our God. But anyway, long and short is that certain things can come and literally shake the human being the flesh you get my point but however much they will come on you 
never allow them to move the state of your spirit never get to a point where you cannot delight in the lord don't say ah i'm going through situations apostle where i'm at right now i can't even pray what what no whether you're going through the worst situations he is still good he is still good and he says and as you continue to rejoice because in your believing he wants a certain joy and peace in there that's the only way your believing will be complete and hope will come in your spirit the lively hope that will give you the end of your faith which is the salvation of your soul do you want to come out of a situation the bible says that when job went through whatever he went through the bible says he judged god not foolishly some people say oh but god why if you're god why do you you've been cut wires for god what no, you, you, you need to grow up. You need to grow up. Everything God is doing in your life, you might not see the end of it, but there is a love to it. I told people, until the day you realize the full expression of His love, His purpose for your life, and truly come to that knowledge, that, that love that passes mere knowledge, and then just stand that everything God will do with mankind and humanity will all be the end of his expression of love toward you he will never express anger and wrath on your life the day it sinks in your spirit that his love will see you through listen it does not matter the worst news in the world you can go through it all and have the end of your faith which is the salvation of your soul some people fail they say but this sister believed but she she failed no 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 maybe and and I've, I've grown this it's like one time i was praying for somebody who was going to die and i prayed for them and the spirit of the lord told me no here this person has said too much negative on their life you might not be able to turn this why their heart was negative their words were negative but they were professing a faith when they were around people of faith listen if you have unbelief in your spirit and you're negatively confessing on your life it doesn't matter how much we pray we will lose you you understand what i'm saying and then there's a then that third person who said hey, but but she was believing she was confessing right why did she die no 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 maybe he or she had not mastered these things maybe maybe i'm not saying it is so but there are many reasons why faith does not work Maybe there is a person who says, oh, but this guy is a believer. Why is it that things are not working in his life? Maybe he does not rejoice in the Lord. Maybe when he's alone, he cries, he weeps and, 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 and wails and complains before God of what is happening and what's not working and oh, why God me, why is this happening to me? And some of you are like that. Much as your confession is right, your mustard baby, your serendipity, your all these kinds of things. But you know, when you go back home, you have failed to have a certain tenacity of your spirit to hold faith still and rejoice and carry the joy of God and the peace that passes all understanding amidst all manner of trials. And then you think that you, you're going to receive the end of your faith, which is the salvation of your soul. No, you're not going to have it. And then at the end of the day, when you don't see it, you're going to be like, but what you believed, you confessed right, you did all these kinds of things. Why aren't things working? Because the spirit of faith has principles. And these are the things I'm sharing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Nothing can take away the joy of my spirit. Nothing. Even when I go through things and outwardly you might see that you know, inside I'm strong. And eventually the outward comes back and reconciles with the inside. And as you continue exercising that, you realize that nothing comes and stays. It's only for two, three minutes. Two, one day, you process your spirit. You align it to faith. And before you know that, you have a certain peace that passes all human understanding. And the Bible says it guards your heart and mind in Christ. Maybe some of you have a personal issue. You're going through something personal. You, you might not be able to, to share it. Because of the nature, you, you have an issue you've never told even anyone. It's just between you and God. But every time you think about it, you're like, oh God. Be free. Be free. 
have the joy of the Lord constant in your soul. Rejoice in the Lord. Delight in Him. It, it might be even hard to smile in the first place or it might be hard to fix the face. No, that's okay. Faces are faces. We don't live in the face. We live in the spirit. Are you hearing me? Believe God in your spirit and start to delight in Him. Do you know what that does to heaven? When a son of heaven is going through the worst things in life and this person is saying, you are good. You're good God. You're a loving God. You're a faithful God. You're forever with me God. You love me. I'm convinced of your love. Perfect love casteth out all fear. You love me so much to fail. You love me so much to die early. You love me so much for my relationship to fail. You love me so much for my marriage to fail. You love me. I rejoice in your goodness. Your love is overflowing over my spirit. Your grace toward me is exceeding. The righteousness imputed on me. Oh, what a wonder. The marvel plan that you have toward my life is so great. And, and this is the funny thing. As you continue speaking these things, something starts to bubble and then like a certain joy comes eh? it, you start to look like you're not on the same planet as the things that are happening to you a certain joy starts bubbling in your spirit you start feeling like a certain happiness you start feeling a certain hope hope starts to to come eh? they call it hope springing eternal it starts to get in there the next thing you know you even look at yourself and say but honestly am i the one still walking because the day I had this thing, the day this thing happened, the day this circumstance happened, I, I did not know how I was going to pass next week. And now it's one month and I look back and I'm like, God, is it really me? Am I this crazy that circumstances are happening but I have a peace, I have a joy, I have a victory. I'm rejoicing in you like nothing is happening. Don't you think that sometimes you look at the things around you and say, but huh, what if this happens? What if that happens? What if things flip? What if you don't know? What if your face fails? What if uh, uh, statistics start to tell you, reports come through, people start giving you, people start threatening you. But then at somewhere in there, there is a thing telling you, ah! Mm -mm. but look at how many times how many years yes but in there I'm strong somebody shout hallelujah you rejoice in God you rejoice in God you delight in him hallelujah you have a joy a joy you fill your soul with joy you fill your spirit with joy. Oh, yes, maybe at that particular point it might be hard. Yes, look for something that gives you joy. And for me, what I do is the word. Hallelujah. I, 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 I. Don't be mistaken by what you see outside. When I get home, I run mad. That's why I love being alone sometimes. Sometimes I, I just want to get in my room and run a bit mad. Are you hearing me? And jump to myself, dance to myself, scream, and then find myself sweating. And I'm like, hey, hey. you understand what I'm saying? And, you rejoice in the Lord. And then before you know that, it becomes, me, that's how I do warfare. I don't do warfare by saying, kill them, God. Let them die. Vindicate me. Kill their mouth. Pull their teeth out. Break them. Uh -uh. I say, God, what a glory. What a great and effectual day you've opened for me to go upward. What a victory that you've opened for me. What an increase that is coming my way. What a breakthrough that is coming. What a joy. What a wonder. What a fellowship. Oh, you must, you must, you, you, you must. You must be up to something big for me. You must be up to something so big for me. I said, God, you know that I love you. Every Thursday, I am winning souls to the kingdom of heaven. There are people here, if they had not had me, they would have died. Some of you, eh? the, the, if you had not met this message, you would have run mad. Because the situations you are going through are going to kill you alone before anything else. This is your, your tranquilizer. This is your, 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 your uh, it's the thing you take and say, Whoo! You understand what I'm saying? 
Hallelujah, somebody. I'm telling you because I've been through worse, and then you rejoice in the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. You carry the joy of your salvation because I know I will receive the end of my faith, the salvation of my soul. I know it. My soul knows that very well. Tell your neighbor, learn to fight the right way. You make your face to shine on me that my soul knows very well speak in tongues come on you lift me up i'm cleansed and free that my soul knows very well when mountains
joy in your heart. Clap like you're rejoicing in the cord of your salvation, the lift of your head, the darling of heaven, the redeemer. your faith which is the salvation of your soul don't cry another day don't weep another day I don't care what you're going through don't cry another day if they're tears they're only supposed to be tears of joy and gratitude to God but don't cry don't weep do not be sad he says be of good cheer for I have overcome this world. Don't. 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 You receive the end of your faith. Don't. In Jesus name. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus and you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, please come and receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're not born again and you want to receive this free gift of righteousness, come and receive him as your Lord and Savior. You're going to repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Tell him, Jesus, I believe that you died and rose again for me. Tell him, Jesus, you are the Son of God that gave his life for me and now I receive your Lordship. My life changes. Amen. God bless you. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at funerocompala at gmail.com you can also find us on the web at www.funero.org or better still feel free to join us every thursday for our weekly fellowship at uma multipurpose hall from 5 p.m to 8 p.m you can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash funero funero make manifest